The time has come once again, my dear familia. Card review season is here. I'm not going to be doing the whole voting process because uh, people really don't like that because it's so slow. But we will talk about it. I'll read chat while I'm reviewing the cards. So uh, we'll rate them through uh, one to five uh, like a normal person instead of whatever scotch rating system I had last time. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. Uh, Dawn of Calamity coming out, I believe, on the 27th, so just six days from now. Uh, and quite a few cards have already been released or revealed. Most of them adapted from the anime, uh, but with buffs, because the anime meta is, like, years behind current meta. So in the anime, they're way weaker. Um, and if they ported it over one-to-one, -one, they would see no play. Um, so they did buff most of these, including my boy Ignis Dragon, but we'll get to that. So let's start with Forest Craft, Brilliant Fairy, 4 play point, 3, 4. Uh, fanfare, give plus 1, plus 1 to another allied follower of at least two other cards were played this turn. Give plus 1, plus 1, and Storm to all allied fairies. This card is... sucks. <laughs> this card is really bad. This is a 1 out of 5 card in my book. Uh, it's literally the most scuffed and... and and poopy version of Amata's imaginable. Um, <laughs> four play point three four is so expensive. Uh, giving plus one plus one to another allied follower on curve. Are you kidding me? And then if at least two other cards were played, give plus one plus one and storm to all allied fairies. Not even fairies in hand. It's fairies on board. So you have to play the fairies first. Doesn't even buff fairy wisps either. And, like, maximum, it's not that much damage. Like, even if you buff the fairies through Gigantic Blossoms effect, combo effect, it's still so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's still six damage storm on six. I really don't think it's that good. Like, at best, it's mediocre. One out of five, maybe two out of five, but I really... Really don't believe in it. And also, 6 damage turn 6. Have you seen a, a card called Mistelina and Baleon? I don't know, boys. <laughs> almost as good as Latica. It's literally the same cost as Latica and it does almost nothing. I think it's pretty poopy doo-doo. I'm giving it a 2 out of 5. I wish I could draw on the screen. Does anybody have that technology? How do you draw on the screen? Like, I've seen some streamers do it where they can, like, draw on their OBS screen. I wish I could rate... I wish I could do that. But imagine me drawing a big red, like, 1 out of 5 on this thing. Maybe 2 out of 5 on a good day. Next. Flower Fox. Oh my god! It's just a little guy. It's just a little guy. Oh my god! It's so cute! 1-1-1. One, one, one. During your turn, whenever an effect adds at least one fairy to your hand, double the number of fairies added. This damn fox is gonna ruin people one day. I mean, listen, it's n it's not the worst. It can definitely there's definitely potential for combos with this card. Uh, it will get played. I think. God, I wish it doubled fairy wisps. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if it doubled fairy wisps? But uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's definitely not bad. Uh, especially like imagine an unlimited with like Amatas, turn two flower fox, uh, gigantic blossom, get four. Then you only need one more proc to. To get the avatars out, right? You only need to get the, the six. So yeah, you Flower Fox, Gigantic Blossom, Gigantic Blossom, Bing Bang Boom, Avatars is live. Maybe maybe you even if you really high roll, you can get Avatars live on turn three with Flower Fox, which is freaking crazy. I think this card is pretty damn good. I would give it like in rotation though, I'm not really seeing it, but on unlimited it has it has potential. You're ruining your pull with Liza. That's also true, unfortunately. Um, I'm probably going to give it like a 3 out of 5. What, what do we think, chat? 3 out of 5, fair? Oh, I accidentally clicked back. Not bad. <laughs> 3 out of 5? I think 3 out of 5 is pretty fair for this card. It's definitely better than this one. I think, it's, uh, I think it has potential. For sure, for sure, for sure. 4 for you? 4? I can see that, I can see that. I'll give it a 3 out of 5 for now. But it definitely has the potential to be even better. Blast Fairy 101, put a fairy into your hand, deal X damage to an enemy follower, X equals the number of fairies in your hand. This card is great. This card is great, okay? Like, listen, it's a one play point that 
it's another fairy generator, so you're not always dependent on drawing your gigantic blossom to get your, uh, your, your, what's it called? The amulet active. The two playpoint amulet? The, f the fairy friend amulet? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? What's the card called? I literally forgot. Good thing I have the game open right here. Uh, Tree of Wonders. That's the one I'm thinking of. So, you know, it's another one cost generator for getting your Tree of Wonders active on two, which right now Forest is really dependent on Gigantic Blossom for doing that. Um, so this is, I think it's really strong. I really like this one. It activates your Tree of Wonders. It's one cost potential removal as well. Uh, it, it, it's a one cost, so it, fits into your combos really well, too, and super easily. I think, importantly, it gets your Tree of Wonders up even more consistently for Excel. I like this one, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I think this is a 4 out of 5. I think this card is super strong. I, I saw that in the anime it was a 3 cost, and that would have been trash, but as a 1 cost? <laughs> it's fantastic, I think. Victorious Blader. Accelerate 2, summon a Heavy Knight and a Knight? That's pretty okay. Rush can attack two times per turn while this follower is in play. Your leader and all allied followers in play. And that come into play, reduce damage taken by three. That is fairly annoying. That's not bad. I mean, the Accelerate really makes it playable. Because then it's not just dead in your hand, right? And the, the body itself is, is heavy, but it's got a defensive effect. Very board-based. Replaces Shield Phalanx. Oh, that is true. Does Shield Phalanx rotate? That's so true. Yeah, so it does replace Shield Phalanx. Replayed? It does replace Shield Phalanx. Uh, and the follower itself is kind of... Mm, but the, the Accelerate is pretty much necessary for, uh, for Sword decks wanting to get on the board. But I will say... Is that actually good? <laughs> the only playable sword deck right now doesn't even play Phalanx, right? I mean, and Rally Sword, I think, is gonna have a bad time. Given this, and this, and, um... Whoa, where, whoa, ba, ba, this. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, dude. I'm... Four, I think, might be high. I'm gonna give it a three. I don't really believe in Rally Sword, to be honest. I think it's okay at best. Going into the next set, hopefully I'm wrong. I would love Rally Sword to be better than Miss Delina Bailey on combo, but um, does Dramatic Retreat rotate? I believe it does. Does it not? When does when when did Dramatic Retreat come out? Nope. Okay, yeah. Then never mind. Then it's a three. <laughs> dramatic Retreat rotates. It's a four. It, it, dramatic Retreat didn't rotate. It's a three. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe in it, to be honest. I think the board-based sword decks are really going to have a bad time this set. I mean, they're already having a bad time. They're going to have a worse time. That's my prediction. Maybe I'll be wrong. But, like, I, I really don't believe in it. Okay. Monochrome Endgame. Summon a Queen Emera or Magnus. They're back. Dawnbreak, Night Edge, Queens are back. Enhance 6, you summon both and evolve them. Hemera is a ward that on Clash summons a knight. 3.14, not bad. And then it summons a steel-clad knight if you have Magnus on the board. And on Evo, it gains plus 1, plus 1 for strike. Okay, that's not, that's not too shabby. It's not great, but it's not too shabby for generating boards. It, maybe it's, it's more rally support, really. Magnus, though... All other allied followers in play and that come into play have Rush. And you recover a play point on Evo when you strike. That's... Hmm. That's pretty good. I think I'm liking Magnus a little more than Hemera on 3. Because then you can play at turn 5, evolve the Magnus, strike, and play, like, a 3-drop. That's pretty crazy. That's not bad. The 3-drop gets rush, double trade, deal with the board, get something up. 
Hemra, you can just summon and have it be annoying, keep summoning knights for you. And the Steelclad Knight is a 1-2, a right? So it's not a 1-1, one, one, so it's pretty good in that sense. Uh, I like it, I think. it. Oh, it still has a 2-2. Two, two. Okay, yeah, I, I like it because... Which one is the 1-2? One, the one, There's a 1-1, one, one, it's 1-2, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it's a 2-2. Two, two. That's really not bad. Actually, they're both good on 3. Depending on, like... If, you, if you're, if you like, straight up on 3, you play Queen Emma. If you're on an Evo turn, then you play Magnus, I feel like. Heavy Knight's the 1-2, that's right. Ah, it's a good card, man. It's a lot of value in one card, for sure. I think it's a... I think it's a 4. I think this is a 4 out of 5. I really wish I could draw on the screen here and get some graphics in. I think it's a 4 out of 5. It's... it's really... it's... it's pretty strong. Individually, as its own card. You can pretty much just slot it into any sword deck that wants a board at all. Whether or not that's actually good, we'll have to find out. I think... Ah, oh man, I don't know. I think it's a 4. I think it's a 4. I think it's just good. Okay. Ignis Dragon. This card is... I'm biased, obviously, but this card is amazing. Listen. They buffed it so that it's a Cursed Fuhrer on 3. Like, that's instant play in every dragon deck. That's already instant play in every dragon deck. On Fanfare, if you don't have cards, it, this gets evolved and you draw 2. And on Strike, you clear the whole board and it becomes an 8 attack or a 10 attack. This card is really good because when you ramp aggressively, uh, you often have not that many cards in your hand. This, this card just refilling your hand and evolving by itself is really good. It lets you play a lot more uh, a lot more cheap cards that you can spam out because you're going to refill your hand more. And which which dragon, when they ramp aggressively, has a has a problem on its own. I think it's a... Yeah, he draws two. <laughs> so if you ramp, if you like turn to Oracle, blah, 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 you ramp to Ignis Dragon, you refill your hand. Like, that's so important for... So important for Dragon. I'm giving it a 4.5, I think. This is the strongest card we've seen so far. Uh, yeah. Blast Fairy is really good, too, but I think this is the strongest one we've seen so far. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5. Ignis Dragon, dude. And I, listen, I'm not biased. <laughs> AoE, turn 3, ramp, draw card. It does literally everything. <laughs> 4.5. Okay. Skeleton Raider. This is the one that got the really good trailer on the Rage Tournament. During your turn, whenever an allied follower evolves, subtract one from the cost of this card. It gets Storm and destroy an enemy follower. During your turn, when something is destroyed, deal one damage to all enemies. So you can sort of... You can sort of line up the enemy board and have it be like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then... Pew, 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 pew! Deal a bunch of damage and then go face. Uh, it's a little high roll, like Tanko said. I mean, it, it definitely trolls Rally Sword. <laughs> uh, Evo Shadow, though, is kind of whatever. Um, you could, like, you could force it with Neon and, uh, and the other girl. I just don't know if it's better than Last Words. It, it has potential, but it just seems like there's a lot of setup. And the, the initial cost, I think, is also a smidgen too high. Um, because it also has to be in your hand. It's not like Lucifer, where you draw it and then it subtracts. It has to be in your hand while you evolve it. Uh, meanwhile, it's just a dead card. Uh, I think it's like a 3 out of 5. I really don't really... I, I don't really believe in it. I think it's like a 3 out of 5. I think it's okay. I think it's okay, but it's a lot of setup and it's a lot of, and, and it's a lot of work. It's a 5 in your heart. I think it's a 3 out of 5. I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan, but I do like the idea of the card. I hate that it has a bronze tier name, but it is a cool card. If only it was a little bit better. Here's the card I revealed, Undead Outbreak. Five play point, deal four damage to all enemy followers. Necromancy six, summon two liches. I mean, I revealed it, so biased, obviously, but on, I mean, listen. Deal four damage, summon eight, eight for five. It's pretty good, but... Um, yeah, exactly. Last words exist. Maybe you slot it in just to have a, an intimidating board. 
It feels good, but... This kind of card would have been amazing a year ago, <laughs> but with the with the state the game is in now, I don't think it's as powerful as it otherwise would be. I, I would give it a three as well. I would give it a three as well. Post video clarity. I mean, listen, when I when I'm doing a card reveal, it's I don't rate the card in terms of like, I don't rate the card in my card reveals. <laughs> the card reveals is just to have a little bit of fun. But in honest truth, I don't think this is that great. I think it's like a three out of five. Most of the cards feel like they're good, but they don't matter. That's what I'm sort of feeling as well. I, I would give this a 3 out of 5. It's good on paper, but it just doesn't really do a lot right now. Okay. Dark Contract. Holy Crystal Arch. I still have the Holy Crystal Arch Priest stuck in your head. That's a good song. I should do a, like a review of all my card reveals and then do a tier list. Kaylin, can you do up a tier list with all my card reveals in it? I would love to do that on stream. That'd be so funny. Okay. Draw two cards. If Vengeance is not active for you, deal one damage to your leader. If Wrath is not active for you, deal one damage to your leader. Listen, I also technically revealed this card. This card is good. It's a good card. Uh, it, it, but I don't know if it's going to carry Wrath, given how many things rotate with the next set. Um, so... It's a 4 to 5 card on paper. I mean, it's a fantastic card. I just don't know if, if the archetype is gonna... Like, Urias just carries the whole class by himself. And his back is getting tired, dude. It's it's amazing. It's Blood Pack. Yeah, it's better Blood Pack. But I... It's a 4 to 5 card. Maybe even a 5 out of 5. Yeah, Floros. That's amazing, too. It's it's really good. But, I, again, it just feels like it might not matter. I think it's a 4 to 5 card. Okay, moving on to... Hey, Vancraft, God of Curses. This is an anime Andy. It looks like an anime Andy. Crystallize one, countdown ten. Whenever you play an amulet, subtract one from the countdown, summon it. Last word, give your leader the following effect. At the start of your next turn, summon a God of Curses and evolve it. Remove this effect. Ambush Bane at the end of your turn. Reduce the enemy's leader's maximum defense by four. Can you spam this somehow? This card is pretty poopy doo-doo unless you can cheat it out. Like, you have to be able to cheat it out, then it's playable. Because it's so expensive, it does nothing on board if you if you rush in. I mean, obviously it has Bane, right? So you can trade, but then you, you lose four defense, and then you instantly kill it. So unless you leave it on board forever... Um, Natura, this is spammable. Just Yatalant. Yatalant, summon it. Evolve it. Selena. I think it's- I think this is overrated, guys. I think you're overrating this one. Yeah, weaker Carol. That's exactly what I feel as well. A much weaker Carol. I think you guys might be overrating it. The effect is very flashy, don't get me wrong. It's very cool. But I just feel like it's kind of garbage, because you do so much work for it, then you reduce the enemy leader's maximum defense by four. Uh, and, and, it, and it takes an Evo, or it, uh... Or, or you know, you... You have to have it die first. It seems like a lot of work. It's another one-drop amulet, but is it worth running over like Unicorn Altar? It's a it's a content card. I feel like it's a content card. Konshu exists. You could <laughs> that's so much work for God of Curses to get you have to Konshu it, have it be summoned, have it die, then have it summoned again on the next turn and evolve it. It's so late in the game at that point, I feel like. Unicorn rotates? Okay, yeah, that's fair. Still, though, I don't know, dude. I don't know if it's worth it. Carol at least can clear. I think this is a content card, dude. You, this is a BTC thumbnail Andy. Look, take a good look at this boy's face, because this is going to be on a thumbnail of a BTC video, and you're going to all click on it, and we're all going to have a good laugh, but I just don't think it's very good. I think it's a 2 out of 5. <laughs> it's so much work for, for an underwhelming effect. It's flashy, though. Okay, Cursed Maiden. Gold Fanfare, subtract one from the countdown of an allied amulet. You can manually Evo it, but then it gets 0 6 on Evo. And if you trade with it, they'll just clear it. And then you only add. You, so all you've done is spend six play points to deal four damage. And it's just not worth, I feel like. Uh, okay, anyway. Cursed Maiden. Subtract one from the countdown of an allied amulet. Once on each of your turns, when an allied amulet is destroyed, 
put a random follower with crystallize or amulet with countdown from your deck into your hand. This is pretty good. Like in an amulet deck, they'll probably just run this alongside Shady Priest or something to uh, just to keep the cycle going. It's just a it's just a card that is uh, an engine basically. You you ping off your Shady Priests. You ping off, you know, whatever one cost or two cost amulet that you have on board. You get your cards early from Featherfolk, for example, and you just draw a card, an additional card after that. It sucks, but it's something. Seraph, Seraph, and Unlimited. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, yeah, this is this is a good card. I think it's like a three point five out of five, um, or maybe a four out of five. It's it's quite strong, dude. Windows d did not find any threats. Well, thank God, because I've been downloading a lot of porn. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think it's a 3.5 out of 5. Um, it, it's it's just an engine card. It fits right into the deck, and it just cycles it. Probably a 4, even. Probably I'm, I'm leaning towards 4. Okay. Bum, bada, bum, bum. Liked. The Gear Magus. 3-2-3. Three, three. Put a puppet and enhanced puppet into your hand. Oh. Love your content, Igni. None of these seem to do much. Yeah, it really it really is sad. Thanks for the compliment, though. I appreciate it. Uh, like the Gear Magus. 323, three, sorry. Put a puppet and enhanced puppet into your hand. If at least 20 allied followers have been destroyed, give plus one and storm to all puppets in your hand. When an allied puppet comes into play, restore one defense to your leader. So the Evolve effect is the original Ilga. And then the... Puppet and enhanced puppet. Enhanced puppet is a what? A 133? But it's also a puppet. This is kind of like what happened to freaking Noah, dude. Noah died and liked stole his soul. Um, listen, it's puppet card. It's very hopium. Uh, it's good. It's a good card for sure. Uh, but we we need to see more. We need to see more puppet support. I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's just gonna be. Uh, uh, one of those instances of a card that's good on paper but has no support and then dies a sad existence and never gets played in Unlimited even even forever. <laughs> Noah died and Like stole his soul and it's still not even good enough. I feel like Puppet needs way more push than this. But if Puppet does become good, this card gets good too. Because it's a great card on paper. Giving you a 3-3 that's one cost that's treated as a Puppet can give it Storm as well. But it's it's a, it's a it's a bunch of work and not enough support for the archetype. I think it's like a it's like a two out of five. Two point five out of five could go up with future with the future, but right now I don't see it. Jupiter, we're on to the neutrals. Jupiter, six four six, ward fanfare, banish an enemy follower, draw a card, recover two play points. What the heck? If allied followers have evolved at least five times this match, recover four play points instead and restore four defense to your leader. Evo support! It's not bad, honestly. I mean, look, Odin's run. I mean, Odin storms, but Odin also doesn't cost two play points, right? So, <laughs> I mean, in 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 any Evo deck, this is a strong card. I think it's a four. It's pretty, oh, Resolve is rotating. Yeah, that's a good point. I think this might be a four out of five. Like, this is a strong neutral card. Fits into any Evo deck that wants to be a little wants to be a little pew pew. It doesn't banish factory. That's right. It only banishes followers. I think it's okay. Oh, maybe four is a little high. I think I'm going to go for 3.5 out of 5. Because it is a controlling card, but since when is control good, right? But uh, but in an Evo deck, which just needs like a little bit in the mid game to push them into like a turn 7, 8 lethal, I think it's I think it's decent. I think it's decent. 3.5 or 4, I think, out of 5. Definitely decent. Thank God it doesn't banish factory. I'm going to animate her. It looks like not not, right? Am I crazy? Is this... It looks like not not right? It even has the the hair, the red hair stripe. It lo uh, when I first saw this, I literally thought it was not not in a different set of clothes. It's very strange, but it's a it's a pretty good card. 3.5 out of... or 4, I think, out of 5. Did we skip rune? Uh, there are no rune cards revealed with the official translation yet. I have to wait for it to be on the site, I think. Uh, they did reveal a Chrono Witch and... Uh, the Moggy, but... It's on the Twitter? Okay, I'll pull it up later. Fudo, Seasoned Pyrotech. 5-4-4, four, four, deal 2 damage to a random enemy follower, and then your enemy leader, do this one time. Any spells or amulets are in your hand, do this two times instead. Uh, this is pretty terrible. 
This is this is pretty terrible. This is like a take two Andy, right? <laughs> this is a take two Andy. I'm pretty sure. You you ping two randoms. You ping the face too. That's not that's not the worst thing in the world. Aggro deck with this in it. <laughs> it's not great. But it's not the worst. It's a take two card. I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to rate this one. It just feels kind of bad. Can pop two on Evo. He does pop two on Evo. I don't know. Again, it just feels like none of these things even matter. I'm gonna give it a two point five. Two point five out of five. He's good with Tolerance. It does reduce Tolerance by like eight. Actually, that's a great point. Oh, maybe I bump him up. Maybe three out of five. Potential, but he's subpar on paper. 14 with Evo. Yeah, if you have a target to run into. With Tolerance, this, I mean, damn, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a 3 out of 5. Subpar in paper, but there's decks in which he can work in. Okay, let's take a look at the Twitter. Uh, let me pull down the display capture first so that when I pull up Twitter, it doesn't, like, show my follows, because that's sus. It actually isn't. What do I follow? What's on my follow screen right now? Oh, they just released it, dude. They really just released it. Okay, let's take a look. Bada bing, bada boom, dude. Uh, do you want to follow Shadowverse Espanol? Not official? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chrono Witch. There he is, boys. 1344. Subtract one from the cost of this card. If this card has been spell boosted 13 times, recover one play point. So if it's zero cost, you recover a play point. Oh, sorry, an evil point. Uh, summon four copies of random allied non neutral followers with different names, evolve them. Evolve spell boost rune. It doesn't seem busted. It's not Kuan on crack because Kuan's good on six. This card does jack on six. It's it's actually I think on average slower than Kuan. With Geos. Ooh, summon a mist dragon. Summon an incandescent. Oh, not a bad application. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I see it. I see it. I think it's like a 3.5 out of 5. Maybe a 4? Maybe a 4. I think it works. Got an Evo point back too. Dude, it's pretty good. It's pretty freaking good. Uh, Yo, hold up. Evo... It, it Evo's guys. Ding dong! It Evo's guys. And... It summons non-neutrals, and it spell boosts. Xeno, Ifrit, Copium? <laughs> Is it happening? <laughs> Is it happening, dude? I think it's a 4 out of 5. I think it has a lot of applications now that I think about it. Um, especially post Geos. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 3.8 out of 5. 3.85 out of 5. Final score. Final rating. <laughs> it is random, so you can get like a... It can get like a poopy doo-doo card like Squirtle, but I think it's like a 3.85 out of 5. Okay. Witching Moggy. If it's been spell boosted an odd number of times, subtract 1 from the cost, otherwise gain plus 1 attack, rush, strike, draw 2... What is this? <laughs> what is this card, dude? It's so expensive. I mean, it draws two cards, though. That's pretty good. It's an expensive card, but it draws two cards. New Fate's Hand? How is it a new Fate's Hand? It doesn't go down. It doesn't go... It doesn't go down, right? Oh, does it... Does it... Is it additive? Does it, I, I, I thought it only goes to three. Is it additive? Does it go all the way down to zero? So if you spell boosted once and then again, and then, oh my god, really? Oh, then it's way better than I thought. Okay, then it's a five out of five card. <laughs> then it's a five out of five card. 
I didn't know it was repeatable. That's repeatable. So it goes down to zero. That's a five out of five. That's a five out of five card straight up. No doubt. Jesus Christ. Okay. Final thingy. It's time. Genesis Artifact. What the heck is this? It's the world's fanciest cup. 4.25. It's a main deck. It's a main deck artifact. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. If at least six allied artifact cards with different names have been destroyed, put two cannon artifacts into your hand. Evolve, summon, guard, and defense. Okay, let's find out what these things are. 425. If you have six names, summon a... Or put two. One costs two two storms that deal X damage to a random enemy follower or the leader if there is no enemy followers. What the heck? What the heck, dude? What? <laughs> what? Guard can't be destroyed by effect. Wait, so on turn four, it's a four play point. Two, four, seven. Five, eight. Eight. It's an eight, eight. It's a four play point, eight, eight, dude. It's a four play point, eight, eight, bro. What the heck? And it's a main deck, so it makes your Spinardia excel way better, too. And then this is just the, the Finito. And there, and this adds three names, too. Like, Bruh. This is pretty damn good, man. 4.6 out of 5. <laughs> I think it's a 4.6 out of 5. The Garden Defense also, like, has semi-immunity. Final score! 4.68 out of 5. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a crazy card. Goddamn. Just go 5 out of 5? Hell no. Hell no. I haven't seen a 5 out of 5 card this set yet. We're waiting for it. It's gonna happen. Praise up. Dark Emperor, save us. <laughs> Dark Emperor, please. But that's all the cards, I think. That's that's all of them. Well, let me know what you think of the cards in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. We'll be doing another review uh, closer to the expansion release to finish it out. I think we'll just do two videos on this. I don't want to make, like, a card review every day. That's weird. But we'll, we'll do one closer to the release when all the cards are out. Um, but yeah, so far, I'm not super impressed, honestly, with the, with the cards. A few of them stand out to me. Uh, Ignis Dragon is fantastic, Blast Fairy is quite good, and, uh, this one is very good, too, and, uh, this one, but other- oh, and this guy, but- but, uh, uh, generally I'm not super impressed with the- with the card- the card power so far, but it's- it's alright. Well, that's it for this video, like it if you did, don't if you didn't, subscribe for more Shadowverse content, if there's any future, see you all next time, Bye bye